welcome up contestant number six. Jeff Fish, maintaining marital bliss. <laughs> maintaining marital bliss, Jeff Fish. Thank you, Mr. Toastmaster, fellow Toastmasters, and honored guests. It's hard for me to believe that as of this past May, I've been married for 13 years. The same woman. Over that time, I've learned a thing or two about how to keep things together, how to maintain the peace. I'd like to share with you this evening a couple of the pearls of wisdom I picked up along the way. I told my wife a couple weeks ago I'd be coming up here to Thunder Bay to give a speech on marital wisdom. First thing she asked was, how long is this speech going to be? <laughs> I told her it would be, be about seven minutes. She then said, Jeff, after you've completely exhausted your vast stores of marital wisdom, what are you going to do with the remaining six minutes? <laughs> <laughs> that never was her strong suit. <laughs> the first key to maintaining marital bliss is to put the needs of your spouse ahead of your own. Many times when we enter relationships, whether they're friendships, dating relationships, or even marriages. We do so for selfish reasons. We recognize that the other person in the relationship has something to offer that satisfies some need that we have. The way to take your marriage to the next level is to turn that conflict around and put your spouse's needs ahead of your own. Let me give you an example. About a month ago, it was a spectacular, glorious late September Sunday afternoon. My wife was running around. She was weeding the garden washing the car, doing the iron, painting the shed, and of course watching our three kids. Meanwhile, I was sitting out on the deck in the chaise lounge, and I had my glass of lemonade, and I was reading this really good book, and I could see out of the corner of my eye, my wife was coming towards me. I said, oh, honey, what's up? She comes up the stairs and she says, oh, Jeff, let me tell you, I don't know how I'm supposed to get all this stuff done and cook dinner for you tonight. It's too much. I thought to myself, I didn't that perhaps my wife has a need. I think her, her schedule's a little bit too, too tight. So I said, honey, it's Sunday afternoon. If we don't keep a really tight schedule, it's not the end of the world. Tell you what, don't even worry about dinner. You just finish up all those things you're working on, and then you can take care of dinner. <laughs> if dinner's a couple hours late, it's not going to be a big deal. I'm almost done with this, this really good book. I, I bet I can finish it that time. Oh, and while you're up, could you give me a glass of lemonade, please? Now notice, I identified and addressed her needs, and then I brought in my needs. <laughs> Putting your spouse's needs ahead of your own is a great way to move your relationship to the next level. While identifying and prioritizing needs is certainly important, it's equally important to understand how your spouse perceives problems. There was a book in the early 90s by an author by the name of John Gray titled Men Are From Mars and Women Are From Venus. In this book, he describes how men and women tackle problems in fundamentally different ways. When a man is confronted with a problem, he wants to dive right in and fix it. Women, on the other hand, prefer to discuss their problems, prefer to explore their feelings and emotions. Conflict arises when men are always jumping in and trying to solve women's problems. We then get tired of the constant nagging and complaining and going on and on and on about the problem. We just want it fixed. Women, on the other hand, are always looking to have their problems fixed. They want somebody to talk to. They want somebody to validate their feelings and emotions. Gentlemen, you come to realize that that woman in your life is not always looking for that knight in shining armor but sometimes just a gentle shoulder to cry upon. You're going to be much better off in your relationship. As what would happen just yesterday, I had an opportunity to put this into practice. I was zipping up my suitcase, ready, getting ready to come up here to Thunder Bay, and my wife had left to go to work and take the kids to school, or so I thought. When all of a sudden the front door burst open, my wife comes running in, and she said, Jeff, 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 the kids are in the car. I'm running late, and it's, it's, it's got a flat tire. The car, it's got a flat tire. Immediately, I wanted to go in all kinds of blazing and just solve the problem. But I took a step back. I heard the wisdom of John Gray. I set down my suitcase, took another bite of my donut, I set that down, and I just walked over to my wife and I gently embraced her. And I said, Oh, honey, you must be 
being so stressed right now. This this must be this must be terrible for you. You must be you must be feeling so frustrated right now. I understand how you're feeling. The look on her face. It was amazing. She she was speechless. I had managed to connect with her in a way I had never yet connected before. I had reached the pinnacle of marital communication right then and there. I had nowhere to go down from there, so I figured I, I'd better leave it behind now. So I grabbed my donut and my, my suitcase and I started heading for the door. But then inside with the icing on the cake. I said, honey, if you need to talk about this some more, you can call me on my cell phone. I'll still be in range for a couple of hours before I get up to Thunder Bay. And just remember, you can do it. I then headed back to the car and waved the kids and confirmed, oh, oh, oh that tire's flat all right. <laughs> Threw my suitcase in the back of the car and well, here I am. I really think I'm onto something because I noticed as I was coming in to the banquet this evening, I received an email from her. It has a simple one word subject, and that subject is thanks. Gratitude is also a very important thing to bring in any relationship. The email goes on to say, thanks to you. I was over two hours late for work yesterday, you lazy son of a oh. <laughs> she would have said the pet names to me sometimes. <laughs> and she's from New Jersey, what can I say? I hope that these little pearls of wisdom that have worked wonders for me over the past 13 years can really work some magic in your relationships as well. And look at that, the yellow lights on. My wife is going to be so proud to know I had over six minutes of marital wisdom to share with all of you. Thank you.